Okay, in this section of graph theory, we're going to take a look at graph coloring. And uh, in order to introduce graph coloring, we're first going to talk about map coloring, which you may actually already sort of be familiar with. The idea behind map coloring is, uh, for example, in this U.S. Uh, geography map, um, no two states that are adjacent to each other can be assigned the same color. So since the state New York um, is touching uh, here Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, none of those colors can be assigned the same color purple that New York has been assigned. Um, it turns out that you can color the U.S. map using just four colors, uh, but you can't do any better than four colors. And that's one of the questions we'll be looking at in graph theory. This is an example of another map, um, just assuming this is just sort of a made-up area, and the way we would sort of color a map is to pick some region and arbitrarily give it a color. So if we gave this region the color red, then neither of these two regions here could be colored red. And we can start to sort of just be arbitrary about it, call this one blue. Um, now this one over here can't be red or blue because it's adjacent to those, so we'll go with green. Um, and then we would try to reuse colors if possible. Um, when we look at this region right here, right, it could be colored green or red. We usually have a system, and since red was our first color, we go back to the first color red there, and then we can color this red as well. And you can see that no adjacent regions here are colored the same color. Okay, so this is the idea of map coloring, and graph coloring is going to be the same basic idea. We're going to try to use the least number of colors we can to label each vertex so no two adjacent vertices have the same color assigned. Now for small problems like these, we can just sort of do it by trial and error. But as we've seen a lot in graph theory, uh, in order to have an algorithm that works all the time, um, it's actually quite complicated. You would have to sort of think about all the possible choices you have to make along the way, and then do some backtracking. So we arbitrarily start with a vertex labeled red, but maybe we would have been better off labeling that vertex blue. Uh, and if we get stuck somewhere having to introduce a new color, before we introduce a new color, we have to go back and make sure we couldn't do any better. But most likely, if you're going to have to do this by hand, you're going to be stuck with examples that are easy to manage. Now, one thing you can sort of notice right away, if you have a, a triangle like this, a circuit of three, where all three of these vertices are connected to each other, they're going to have to be three different colors. So you can sort of get a nice, easy start and do red, green, and blue for those three colors and then see if you can continue on from there without introducing any new colors. Now this vertex uh, up here right, is adjacent to green but it could be colored red or blue. Our default would be to go back to red if at all possible. That's our first color that we picked. Uh, and then when we come down here this one can't be red but it could be green or blue. Uh, it really doesn't matter in this case and we can get away with three colors for this graph here. Okay. Now, a graph like this over here is going to be a little bit more complicated because we have a lot more connectivity, so we're going to have to deal with that. But I'm going to start the same basic way I did. That's not red. I'm going to go with red here, green here, and blue here for this circuit. Okay, And I look at this vertex over here next because this red green here is connected to another circuit of three. So this would also have to be blue if I'm going to try to stick with those colors. Now when I get to this vertex right here in between the red and the blue, I can't color it red, I can't color it green because it's adjacent to this, and I can't color it blue. So I'm going to have a problem here. All right, I'm going to have to introduce a new color go with purple because I'm not sure yellow would show up. Okay, And then we're going to come down to this vertex here. Now here's where we go ahead and we, we hope that we pick right, but we might have to backtrack. I can call this one red because it doesn't conflict. I've got a red here and a red here. This one here can't be red or blue, but it can safely be colored green. And then this one can be colored red again. Okay, so if, now you can see that there's no two adjacent vertices, and in a case like this it took us four colors to color the graph. Now, map coloring makes sense because you don't want to have adjacent areas uh, blend, blend into each other and lose the border, but one of the applications for graph coloring would be scheduling. If there were um, conflicts here, if every vertex represented maybe a, a course and two courses were connected if they had common students, 
right? Then you wouldn't be able to give final exams at the same time, so you'd have a conflict. But since red, these all the vertices colored red here don't have any conflicts, right? They could all be offered at the same time. So scheduling, whether it's frequencies or other things like that, uh, often can be dealt with using graph coloring. Okay. Now, mostly for us, it's trial and error. Um, if you have a choice that's arbitrary, you may have to go back later and reconsider that arbor the other options for that arbitrary choice uh, to be assured that you have the best solution. Um, there is a theorem that says that if a graph is planar, then you should be able to do mo no worse than four colors. And that's why over here, if you were to think about the center of each of these states as being uh, part of the graph, right, then you could connect these edges like this, and you could, you would have a planar representation, right, of all the um, states that are connected. So this would, this graph would be planar if we continued on here, right, and because it's planar, we know we can do no worse than four colors. But when graphs get more complicated like this, just determining whether or not it's planar is a complicated problem. Okay. So you're going to have to practice this, do a little bit of trial and error, um, and see if you get better at it.